Hotspot with Loveth. Sarah was no stranger to adversity. Widowed at 35 and left to care for two young children, her late husband's modest farmland in Itoala became her lifeline. Though it yielded meager profits, the land carried the memories of her husband's dreams, which had always revolved around the soil's potential. Her life took a dramatic turn when a group of developers, backed by corrupt politicians, descended on Itoala. They promised wealth and modernization in exchange for land. Most villagers sold their plots, but Sarah stood firm. This land is my family's legacy, she told the developers. I won't sell it for a fleeting promise. Her refusal didn't sit well with the local power brokers. Intimidation followed. Crops were set ablaze one night, and her children returned from school frightened by menacing whispers about their mother's stubbornness. Undeterred, Sarah began planting again, determined to stand her ground. It was during a tense community meeting that she met Thomas Manuel, a young, idealistic politician who had recently won a seat in the state assembly. Unlike his peers, Thomas had a reputation for integrity. His campaign slogan, People Over Politics, had won the hearts of the disenfranchised but earned him powerful enemies. Thomas approached Sarah after the meeting. Mrs. Shun, he began, his voice calm but resolute, I admire your courage. I want to help. Sarah eyed him skeptically. Why would a politician want to help a poor widow like me? She asked. Thomas smiled. Because I believe in what you're fighting for. Your land represents more than profit, it's a symbol of hope for our community. Over the next few weeks, Thomas brought Sarah into his vision of a cooperative farming model. With her land as the centerpiece, they could unite small farmers to pool resources, share profits, and cut out the exploitative middlemen. Sarah hesitated. Trust was hard to come by, but desperation and Thomas's earnestness convinced her to try. The project wasn't easy. Sarah faced resistance from neighbors, who saw her as naive, and threats from the corrupt officials who stood to lose if her idea succeeded. Thomas, too, battled his own challenges. His political opponents smeared him as a reckless dreamer, accusing him of colluding with foreign NGOs. But their perseverance bore fruit. The first harvest under the cooperative model yielded a record profit. The farmers celebrated but the victory was short-lived. One night, goons sent by the land developers stormed the farm. They tore down fences, torched storage facilities, and left Sarah's family trembling in the shadows. Thomas rallied the community. He called for an emergency town hall, where he publicly exposed the developers' links to powerful state officials. His boldness earned him a temporary suspension from the assembly, but it galvanized the villagers. Inspired by Sarah's resilience, they banded together to rebuild the farm. Months later, the cooperative blossomed into a thriving enterprise. The success story drew national attention, forcing the government to investigate the developers. Sarah, once seen as a mere widow clinging to her past, became a symbol of defiance and hope. Standing in the fields one sunny afternoon, Sarah turned to Thomas. You didn't just help me save my land. You helped me find my strength. Thomas nodded, his eyes reflecting quiet determination. And you reminded me why I joined politics in the first place. Their bond, forged through struggle, became a testament to the power of unity, resilience, and the belief that the right seeds, planted in fertile soil, could change the world.